Welcome back to Oathbound Gaming. Today, we're looking at Elion, or Elion, however you want to pronounce it. No one really seems to know what. So this game is an MMO that is towards the end of its closed beta testing in the US right now, US and EU. This game is interesting. It's pretty cool. Definitely something to look into if you're a fan of MMOs. We're going to deep dive into this game. We're going to look into everything. I'm going to show you guys all these features. I'm going to show you the classes. I'm going to do it all. I'm going to show you guys everything you got to know about this game. What you're getting yourself into if you decide to play. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete Living Clown. And then we'll uh, we'll get started with the character creation. <laughs> Should I edit this out of this video? No, I'll believe it. So, I'm going to show you guys the five classes to start. And the character customization. Because, like I said, I want to go through everything this game has to offer. And I think this is an important step. I think this does matter to a lot of you guys. Uh, the character, character creation and, and obviously the classes do matter to everyone, right? So, to start off, we have five classes. There is a sixth class coming. By the time this releases in the US and EU, we will have the sixth class in there. The next closed beta test is supposed to have them. That sixth class is called the Slayer. You'll notice that there's five other classes, so there's a total of six. There's three armor types. There's like heavy, leather, and like light, like a cloth. And each of the classes share two classes per armor type. So Warlord and Slayer have the same heavy armor. Assassin and Gunner have the same. And then Mystic and Elementalist are your light armor. So let's focus on the five we have right now. Warlord is your heavy armor, your mace and shield. That is my main currently. It has a lot of pulls, a lot of CC, very tanky, has a manual shield block where you can hold your shield up and block. Very cool class. Elementalist. Squishy, a very high amount of damage. They are your glass cannon type of caster character, right? Your lightning, your fire, your frost. These guys are your casters. So if you're a mage or a wizard or whatever class that you usually play, whatever it's called, this is the one for you. Mystic. Mystic are your healers. Mystic, they, they heal, but it's not all they do. If you ever play a game where like you're playing a healer and you always need someone else to do your killing for you, you, you need help to because you can't do it on your own, Mystic will not have that problem. You see in the little video on the left, they dish out some damage. They, they do it all. They are able to hold their own when needed. They're able to solo if they want. But they're a great addition to a group combo because they can heal. They can provide the support. Assassin. Assassin is your rogue type, your stealth class. They do have a stealth that they can use. It helps them escape because they are not the tankiest. They are quite squishy, but they have they have stuns. They have stealth. They, they're able to get out of combat if they need to. They need to escape. They are uh, an interesting class. I do like them. It's very appealing class to me. They do have a lot of AoE. They do have that whirlwind type of stuff, just like the Warlord has. They're a nice class. And then your gunner, your dual wield <sighs> firearm class. Your dual wield guns, pretty cool class. They are able to obviously inflict a lot of range damage, physical range damage. They get to pull out like um, like mortars. They get to pull out a big mortar strike that. It's like a big heavy cannon gun that, you know, it's it's not the, it's not a weapon you can use all the time, but it's like a skill usage, you know, he'll swap weapons real quick, release more to switch back to the dual guns. So, um, it's an interesting class, it's good. I, I do like this class as well. They were able to close into melee range and like kick an enemy up in the air and then dash backwards and, and unleash a, like a volley of, of attacks. Pretty damn cool class. If you're into ranged combat, you would like this one. Real quick, I'm going to make a... A character and show you what the character customization looks like um, I'm gonna go back real quick I want to show you the races first you have your human you have your elves you have the manliest class I'm sorry manliest race the world has ever seen the Ein. look how manly these things are buff as hell you don't want to cross one of these in a bar the end of the late at night 4 a.m. some drunk Ein. Kick the crap out of you. It is four foot nothing about the height of my fiance. Really tough as nails. Got to be careful. And of course, the more flimsy orc. Your little orc character. Not buff and badass at all. But uh, yeah, I do like the orcs. I played a human real quick uh, because I was super into getting into the game. I didn't customize anything. Just go, human, go. They left it as default. But I'll probably be playing an orc in live. 
I do like them. They're a little more on the uh, badass looking side for me. I like playing the ugly, brutish ones. Uh, we'll pick the bald guy just like myself. You gotta, you gotta be bald, right? You gotta, you gotta play with what you got. But no, let's put a, let's put a beautiful, beautiful hairstyle on him. Let's let's. <laughs> this is exactly what I did last time. Change up the hair color. I kind of start laughing about the customization you can do. If you want to be colorful, you you can. You could be Mr. Clownface. I don't know. You could do. Whatever you want, there's a lot of character customization. Personally, I'm not too into character customization, but I do know this is important to some of you guys that you want to be able to make your character how you want it. So you definitely can. I'm going to go back because I don't want this at my character screen. I don't want to keep looking at that. Let's get into the game and let's let's get into the meat potatoes of Elion. Elion. Let me show you the features, show you what it's got. We went over the classes, we went over the character customization. Let's get into the features. What are we doing when we log in? What do we play? What do we see in this game? What is there to do every day? Key word there, every day. There's a lot of content in this game. Um, to start off, I just wanted to show you the... the Ignore this screen, we'll get to it. it show you the PvE real quick, what it, what it looks like when you're out here grinding. This, ca this class has... Pulls to set up a nice AoE kill, pop them up in the air, use an attack that resets its cooldown whenever it drops a knockdown enemy, finish them off with some Cyclones. These are enemies that are a fair bit lower level than me, so don't go crazy with how easy those were to kill. Um, Luminous, I'll get into this a little bit more specific later. And Pets, at the right side you see there's going to be an event that actually just popped up. I'm going to join one of these events because that was good timing. Um... I summoned a pet here, and you'll see the pet will auto-loot items. If your inventory is not full like my own, I'm going to go ahead and delete some stuff here. I'll hold on to that one. I'm going to need that. I'll delete some of my lower potions. I want to make some inventory space just so you guys can see exactly how the pet works. You'll see when I have some inventory space, the pet will, um, will actually... Uh... Oh, man, we don't have enough players. Will will automatically loot stuff for me. And it is really nice. You don't have to manually loot your stuff. I'm waiting to see if this event... If you run over stuff, it'll auto-loot like that, too. Oop, the event filled up. It's gonna it's gonna start in a second. So, we will get started there. You see the pet just looted that automatically when I killed that. Because I actually had inventory space. I'm a loot hoarder, what can I say? I never have space in my inventory. So, an event just started. That was good timing. I logged in and an event started. You, those will go off every so often. You'll see an event and you've got to join real quickly before it fills up. And you get various rewards depending on what the event is. There's like fishing quests, fishing events where everyone's trying to catch the biggest fish within the time limit. It's it's pretty interesting uh, stuff. So right now we got an event that started. There's 20 of us here about. Oh, only 15 of us. We'll manage. Um, I'll show you this tab real quick this is the world map we'll get into that a little bit but these are the quests that show up with timed events you'll see it says start time monday tuesday monday monday whatever whatever the time and date is you can reserve a spot so you can get into that easier rather than rushing to click real quick you can reserve a slot because you're going to be online during that time you want to get into that event when it pops up right so okay event started black fang we got to take them down as a group these events are relatively easy. They're nothing crazy. Looks like I got aggro just by doing that real quick. And my class, if I hold right click, I can manually block. So I can block a lot of attacks that otherwise would kill some of the weaker classes. But everyone's got a certain amount of survivability. They're usually okay. You'll, you'll also see, like, rear attack appearing. You see that when I hit an enemy in the back? They do take increased damage, so you do want to try to get your attacks to the back of the enemy to do more damage. See that red circle filling up? I blocked that attack. That was the enemy preparing for a big AoE attack, right? So you want to make sure that uh, you're either dodging out of it or blocking it. So enemies are already dead. Very easy stuff. When the battle's over, we're going to get rewarded for it. And there's also like a little bit of a random RNG roll on who's going to get an additional bonus. So success, there's the experience, gold, pioneer token, reward items, and then you get a bit of a, uh, a rank at the end if you're the 
best player. I think that's based off damage alone. And as a tank, unfortunately, I don't really get that. Best supporting player, I'm pretty sure that's heals. And as a tank, I don't really get any reward. There's no best tanky boy. So, screw me, right? But, um... During the open world boss fights, there's like random rolls on who's going to get like an additional reward. You'll get like a ran, you'll see it'll pop up on screen. Sometimes they get like an extra 50,000 gold, which is actually a pretty hefty amount. That's not bad at all. So that was one of the events. That was good timing. I wasn't going to show that in that order, but that was great. Um, I don't know if you can see my chat box too well, but I got experience and enhancement stone box, gold, and pioneer tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and open this enhancement stone box and you'll see I just got weapon and armor enhancement which is going to be used to upgrade the gear. We'll get into that system later in the video. Like I said, this is going to be a long video. It's going to be everything. So bear with me. We'll get to everything. At the top right, there's another event going on. It's called the Dimensional Portal. Dimensional Portal is an event you can join and you'll see there's times that it opens. It'll open every day. You'll, these times are all the same here. So you don't have to really worry about these, but these are different um, areas, I guess you can call it. The rewards are different depending on what you do. You see there's very, very high-end gear. So we can go to the portal entrance and it'll cost us a fee to join. And we can, oh, I'm not going to do this whole thing. I'm just going to get in there and show you guys what it's like. So there's, there's another event going on here. There's PvP events that go on. If you get what I'm, if you can understand where I'm going with this, there's a lot to do in this game. There's a lot to do. A lot. That could be a good or bad thing for some people, depending on how you look at it. At the end of this video, we'll get to my opinion section of the game. I'll try to withhold my, my opinions at the moment and just show you what the game is rather than um, my opinions as I deliver the, the content. So we'll get to that. So we're going to go ahead and join the... The uh, event, the Dimensional Portal, we're going to go ahead and warp in here. There's a lot. There's a lot to cover. I'm looking at my other monitor, which has a list of content I want to show you guys. There is a lot. So, we come here, we're going to grab quests, defeat monsters at the Scorching Hatchery. So, we can go ahead and, and do that. You'll see here there's uh, recommended levels for each of these transport devices. So, for the simplicity's sake, I'm going to go with the uh, with the baby mode. I'm going to go with the lowest level one, the 37. I'm going to do that just because I don't want to be in here too long. I don't want to get locked in here because these fights can be big. They can be long. You usually want to come here with your guild, make a decent group size, come here and fight enemy players, fight a bunch of mobs. And your faction is going to be here as well to help you hopefully fight off the enemy faction. So as we kill this... We're going to complete our quest and also gain mana experience. You might be wondering, what the heck is mana experience? I will get to that. I'll show you. We're going to get to the character progression section. We're going into the... Right now we're going into the feature section of the video, alright? So I promise you I have a plan. I have, a, I have this organized. So during this event, you'll see this player is helping me right now. And even though we're not grouped, we're all getting rewards for this. So you can help your, your own faction kill mobs, even if they're like, Oh, this guy's stealing my mobs. Not really. Uh, they could leech some experience off by killing the mobs you're killing. But generally, it's not a bad thing because you're just doing it faster. You're doing it a lot less, a lot less risky. And you can, you know, kill more stuff quicker. Uh, while you're in this um, dimensional portal, you can grab these flowers that you'll sometimes see. And that'll give you a buff, which pulses fire damage like that to help you get kills faster. And it's pretty, uh, it's pretty deadly. It'll help you. So, mana experience. I'm going to go ahead and, and leave this now. This is actually a pretty large thing, a large area. And there's a lot of PvP. You will run into other players and stuff. I'm just not going to do that because I don't want to get pulled into this. This is already a long video. I don't want to get pulled into one thing too long. There's bosses in that area. There's stuff that you're going to want to bring a group for, a large group. Um, my guild's already playing right now. I just try to do this recording. Later, I'll group up with them and show you guys some other stuff. Um, one, two, and three player arenas. That's what we're going to look at real quick. I'm not going to join one because that could take some time. But Hall of Honor, right below your minimap, if you click this, you'll see Hall of Honor. One on one, two on two, 3v3, PvP. There's also a training field where you can go, like, practice some builds and stuff and, and fight some some enemies. And you'll see, like, there's different stages to this. So you do get rewards for for going to the training field and just trying to beat the 
like pseudo PvP. You know, they, they give you like fake NPCs to fight as if they would be a player. So it's interesting to just test some builds on them. It's a nice feature to have. So one on one, two on two, three v three arenas. One thing I wanted to point out real quick here. You'll see main rewards, Medal of Honors for 3v3, 2v2's Medal of Honors, 1 vs 1 is nothing, you don't get rewards for it. I'll comment on that later at the end of the video. Uh, 6 player Battlefield, this is an event as well, you'll see it opens up on Saturdays at specific times, at 1 hour intervals, you know, you'll see it runs for an hour, and then it runs for an hour here, runs for an hour there, 3v3 battles, and uh, 3v3 battles in a different environment, different battle. Battleground, Battlefield, whatever you want to call it. Battlefield is what they're calling it. That is the right name. Um, rewards. What do you get for doing this? So when you get Medal of Honor, you can pick a, a line, I guess, and and spend your Medal of Honors to unlock the rewards. So if you spend 110, you'll reach the end, you'll get additional honor points, and you'll get a bunch of stuff along the way. When you're done with that, you know you can swap it up, start spending points here, and unlock the additional rewards. So what does this 200, 200 to 200 obtainable medals mean? Okay, so Medal of Honors, if I scroll over this question mark, you can see Medal of Honors can be acquired as a reward after participating in Hall of Honor content, which is your battlefields and arenas. The number of obtainable Medal of Honors is shared between every character on your account, so you can't go to alts and, like, cheese it, you know? The amount you can obtain increases by 40 every four hours. You cannot gain progress if you don't have any Medals of Honor to obtain. So you cannot just PvP in arenas and battlefields all day and continue to get stuff. You could still go into it, even if you're not rewarded because, I don't know, you're having fun PvPing. But you need to wait for that Medal of Honor currency kind of to reset so you can gain more of it and then get further rewards. Trophy of Honor can be attained by defeat by achieving the first victory condition each day from Hall of Honor content, excluding the training field. Obtain rewards every time five trophies of honor are, are are accumulated. So you'll see here, attainable for the first one of the day, attainable for the uh, tro today's trophy of honor acquisition complete. You know you'll get one per day of these, and then when you get five, you get like a little bonus. So there are rewards from PVPing. I do like that. I definitely hate the uh, games that are like just PVP for fun. I like it. I like rewards. Uh, I'm looking at you, New World. Uh, <laughs> Clan system. Let's go into the clan system real quick. So if I hit G, you're going to see my guild here, the Ornthul. You might know us from some other games. Uh, if you want to join us, you can head to discord.gg forward slash Ornthul or Ornthul.com. We're always recruiting hardcore PvPers. We like to PvP a lot. So here we have a clan system. You're going to see everything. You know, there's a little activity thing. Who joined or left. A roster. We have 50 out of 50 members here. Clan size large. There's clan gold, clan points. Clan storage, clan shop, where you can buy stuff with some clan points. And I like this system. It's it's a little wonky, but it's kind of cool. Where if you go to the research here, you'll see tabs with different stuff that can you can research. This might be a little overwhelming. Don't panic. Don't be like, wow, this is confusing. Like I did when I first opened this. I was like, what the heck am I looking at? You can spend clan points to research stuff that you can then buy for your guild to use so you could summon like a huge mech in a clan war if you prepare for it if you research this stuff and bring it you could summon this in a clan war so you'd use your clan points to like i don't know let me research something i guess cheap you'll see i have near four thousand clan points i've already researched this one so if i hit receive it's going to go ahead and give me that it'll give me that that actual item which is a battle hymn when i use this it increases the critical hit power by 100 for clan members in the 20 meter radius for 20 seconds. So during like a war or something, you can even use this out in the open field. Um, I just use that. You'll see I got the buff there. Battle him. So you can definitely get some um, interesting stuff, some cool stuff that you can summon out in the open field or use for your, your guild. I do have something called the clan caller. I'm going to use this. I've never tried it before. I'm going to use it and see what happens. Um... It's supposed to summon a bunch of clan members, and I don't know what they're... <laughs> this might be interesting. I haven't told them anything. They're gonna be like, what the hell is he doing? Um, they might spawn in here. But there's some interesting stuff you can get through the clan system, through the research and stuff. Uh, in addition to that, there's clan missions, which everyone in the guild... <laughs> Bark just got summoned randomly. He's probably wondering what the hell's going... There's another guild member. Oh, man, they're going to kill me. They're going to... 
they're gonna kill me. I better get out of here. <laughs> they're like, why'd you summon us, man? So, anyway, there's a guild summon, clan summon system. Oh man, when I'm done recording this, they're gonna... They're gonna be like, what the hell was that, man? So anyway, clan missions. It's the last day of the beta, all right? We're having a good time here. So everyone can uh, contribute to the clan mission progress. You'll see here, like, RVR, defeat Vulp and enemies. So as we kill people today in RVR, Realm vs. Realm content, as guild members kill it, that'll progress. And every guild member can claim the rewards when this fills up. So you'll see our reward here is 5,000 gold. I can hit claim reward here. Bam, now I got that reward because my guild members completed it. So get yourself a good clan, a good guild, clan, whatever you want to call it. I'm used to saying guild. Um, you can get rewards for it. That's a pioneer token. I'll get into that too. You can get some good some good rewards if you got a good clan, right? So we're recruiting, by the way. Feel free to join us. Uh, in addition to that, there's clan wars. Uh, we ended up getting first place in the clan wars that go on Saturday and Sunday. They go Saturday and Sunday for two hours. We ended up getting first place in our in our malignant boundary fortress. Um, damn it, Necro just want to see who was on. One of the guild members said. <laughs> They're laughing at it. Uh, but anyway, we ended up uh, placing first place in here, and you could fight over a fortress and eventually uh, claim a fortress, which has a whole ton of additional stuff associated with it. There's gold bounties and stuff for it, so there's a big in-depth clan system in this game with the clan wars, a lot of PvP, cool stuff. So next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to teleport to the house. I'm gonna go ahead and teleport to my house. Everyone in the game gets a house. Pretty cool system. I'm porting out right now. Port, port, port. When we get to the house system, I'm gonna show you what that is all about. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the gathering and crafting lifestyle. I like to kill things. That's generally... I'm a simple-minded person. I like to just beat things up. That's it. But the house system is actually kind of nice. So when I get in here, you're going to see I have some stuff planted. I'm going to harvest this. You're going to see I'm going to harvest this. I'm going to get some ore. I'm going to get some plant stuff. Some herb. Whoops. All right, cutting down a tree. You'll see my logging mastery will go up as well. My inventory is still full. My inventory is full for a reason, because I want you guys to uh, see some stuff. That's why I want to keep some of this. Uh, I could destroy this. But when I run over that, I'll gather it. Okay, so when you first get your house, there's going to be nothing there. There's going to be nothing there, but you'll see this stuff, this flower gardens and mines and storage and all that good stuff. You can place this stuff down. The flower gardens, the orchard, all that. But right now I have no more spots to place. You can see all these open spots here, but I don't have my house upgraded enough to get more stuff placed, right? So I'm already at my limit. But you can delete something if you want, and you can demolish it. There we go, demolished it. And I can place something else down if I want, but I'm going to go ahead and put the mine right back there. So you can place stuff down like that. If you're into... Um, uh, <laughs> my inventory is shot. If you're into cosmetic type of stuff and decorating stuff, you can. You'll see here there's a, a whole lot of stuff I had. Uh, still, all right, I'll use that. So I'll grab something here. Uh, I'm going to have to claim my inventory is still shot. So we're going to go run over to the storage because that's an important part of the house, right? You come here if you want to bank some stuff. That's that's definitely important. You want to know where you can bank stuff, right? Uh, we'll put that that in there, that in there. All right. So we're gonna go to our mail real quick, and we're going to gather something out of the mail. Uh, let's let's grab this because it's one spot. So a wooden side table or something. So you can go and decorate your house. You'll see now. I got there. We go. Beautiful, right? No more furniture needed. Done. Obviously, I well I decorated this place quite well. I got an interior decorator here to fix everything up. I don't care about this stuff. Obviously, this is not me. Um, it's one of the things I wish like I can I can bring someone else over to be like, hey, would you like to uh, 
share a house and you can do all the decorating if you like. I wish I could do that, but you can't. You gotta handle it yourself. But for the the main reason for the house is the storage and the gathering and stuff. So if we go to the flower garden, you'll see I have some seeds here. I'm gonna go ahead and plant that. And you'll see one hour remaining, 59 minutes remaining. It will take time for that to, I don't know, grow, gestate, depending on how you look at it. Um, so I'm placing down little um, <coughs> iron deposit masses. A little weird, but you put it in the ground, it grows ore for you. And then here you can plant some trees, which I put in a storage chest, whatever. You plant trees and everything grows there, right? Um, there's a merchant in your house that sells... Okay, I'll pick up two of these. They sell things that you can plant. The thing is, they only sell a limited amount, and it's not enough to get you through the day. So you have to jump to other people's houses and gather stuff and gather from their vendor. So we can say friend's house. I can jump to someone else's house. Like I'll go to, if I go to Bark's house here, I can jump to his house and his vendor will be there. And I can buy from his vendor as well. Cause you'll see if I go here now, you'll see sold out. I can only buy it two per day, two per day for this as well. So you do have to jump around to friend's houses and gather some more stuff so you can continue planting. Why plant? Good question, sir. Glad you asked that nobody. So once you get a lot of materials, you can come here and craft important stuff. You'll see here I got, uh, I'm going to craft metal rods. Here is the ore fragment I need to craft it. These things here, they're useless. That's just like the processing that the player, the character's doing. Scorch and knock. And, it's stupid. It shouldn't even be there. The only material is ore fragment. That you need for metal rods. Normally you're gonna make metal rods, but you have a chance to get tough metal rod. If I hit max and hit craft, you'll see it'll cost me 540 gold, and it'll take some time to craft. This is gonna take seven minutes, so go grab yourself a coffee. Thanks, Wawa. Ice coffee. I am not gonna sit here for the entire seven minutes, obviously, right? Uh, first thing I crafted was lucky enough, the 10% chance to get a tough metal rod, I actually got one. So I got one metal rod and uh, one tough metal rod. So what the heck does that mean? So here's a little tip for you. So you'll see I have my metal rod in my inventory. There's a little bag down here, material bag, which you eventually get in the game. And your materials come in here. You'll eventually be able to get a bigger bag, which I'm going to need. But your materials will come in here. The symbols next to the symbol... I'm sorry. The symbols on the icons at the top left, they mean something. The tough metal rod is used for crafting. You'll see it'll say crafting material. Rare grade crafting material. But if I scroll over this one... On common grade crafting, crafting material, but can be traded from your house to acquire gold. While the blue one says, tough metal rod crafted in small qualities, used for crafting weapons. They're different. So that's that's what those symbols mean. The anvil means it's used for crafting. The sailboat means it's used for trading. Select trade goods to view a region. So just to clarify where we are, we're at the trade bulletin board in our house. We're going to come here and we're going to select metal rod. What the heck am I looking at here, right? Take it easy, I got you back. Got you back, bro. I'm going to explain this. So we have a stock market here. We have calls and puts, and we have stocks, right? So you want to team up with a mutual fund. Okay, I'm making that all up. So we do kind of have a stock market here. It, stock market. So we're going to click Metal Rod here, and it's going to show you a bunch of locations where you can sell this Metal Rod. Don't panic. Don't get out of control here, all right? So... We're going to select a location here, and you're going to see the metal rod section out here. We can ignore this because we're not trading that. We're trading metal rods. And you're going to see the price of the metal rods, how they have been adjusting at the specific region. Red means it's going up. Blue means it's going down. We actually want red. Red means it's going to sell for higher. It's going up. But we also need to take into account the risk level. This is a bit far. Relatively high profit is expected. So... There's a risk versus reward here, where if we sell something somewhere, we might lose our cargo, which you can get trade insurance. Preserve and receive 50% of trade goods when losing them. Membership fee is 10,000 gold per day. So for those of you that are into making a ton of gold, which gold is very important in this game, very important, almost more than any other MMO I've like, ever played. Almost. Very important. So... As you're crafting and gathering stuff, you get these materials and you can do a 
a run. Let's select something with a little bit lower risk level. Let's go with this one here. If we select this one, you'll see that there is now one more option that we need to select. And it'll um, determine our risk, our reward, how long it's going to take, what the shipping fee is, what the storage fee is, and how many you can send. You'll see this one is relatively cheap, right? But the shipping fee is much well the, the the amount we could send is much lower if we select something you pay the same whether you ship one versus the max capacity of 400 so it's very important when you're doing this to go for the max amount don't sell one because you're going to lose money you can lose money doing this um i'm pretty sure it says this here somewhere after completing transportation, you can sell the trade goods from the sell goods trade good screen. Storage fee will be charged every 15 minutes after arrival and will be deducted from the gross trade profit. So that means once I send this, I need to be here at the hour and 41 minute mark to get max profit because I need to come here and hit the sell goods thing. So this is uh, an intuitive design. You're talking about setting alarms and stuff. Like, oh, make sure I go back and do this sell. So keep that in mind. So we'll prepare for departure, we'll do a max of 50, and you'll see 14,750 trade goods will periodically incur storage fees upon arrival until they are sold. So shipping fee, my total trade price, I'm going to sell a maximum of 50, which is the much, as much as they have. So I'm going to say, go ahead, go for it, buddy. So now this trade ship is going to work their way over here, stand by for five minutes, and it's going to go. When it's done, I'll be able to sell it and, and make a profit. Pretty cool system for those of you into the big gold farming and, and making a lot of gold, which again, super important in this game. Gold is power in this game, all right? It is stupid important. So we're going to go ahead and leave the house now. Um, you already seen... Oh, wait, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Luminous. Before I go anywhere, luminous. So let's say I just sent that thing out, right? I know I have an hour, an hour and blank minutes. I don't even care because this bait is ending soon, right? I sent it out, right? luminous what the heck is that so if i hit my key here you can see luminous and pets so luminous here is something that we can select and it will gain energy it'll gain energy over time and you'll see luminous energy luminous battle available for six hours and 27 minutes luminous energy resets daily at 9 a.m luminous battles are carried out by consuming luminous energy luminous energy can be carried out at your house defeating monsters to charge Defeat monsters to charge a luminous energy so you can get more by fighting. The charge efficiency of luminous energy is lowered upon defeating monsters that are too weak or too strong. Okay. So, this might be a little confusing, but I'm going to show you. So, here we're going to select the location, right? These are just like the dungeons that you have unlocked. They're the names of the dungeons, same thing. Doesn't really matter, though. What you care about here is at the bottom. Luminous battle dungeon main reward. What you can get from doing this, right? Here, we see one of these is an upgrade stone piece. So you can get upgrade stone pieces and weapon enhancement stones by doing this. And we can do it for 6 hours and 27 minutes. There's also item drop, gold acquisition, and experience gain increases by 300%. I have 54 minutes of them. That is likely to be a cash shop item. I'll get to the... the cash shop stuff at the end. There's no cash shop in this beta right now. We'll talk to about... The good and bad of the game at the end. I'll save that. But I'm going to go ahead and start Luminous Battle. Hit yes. We're going to go ahead and start. And that's it. Kick back and relax for 6 hours and 26 minutes. I'm not kidding. This is actually an AFK system. This is like an auto clicker type of game. You ever play one of those things? It plays itself. And you can AFK and get experience and get gold. It is at a massive fraction of what you get from actually playing. But... This is essentially like mining. It's like GPU mining, right? At the end of the night, it's like, I'm going to let my game run. And instead of getting cryptocurrency, you're getting experience and gold and some items in your MMO. You can do that. Uh, you can just let that run and uh, just kick back and let it do its thing overnight. And then you could stop the battle and claim your rewards and leave with it. So I only got experience in gold, but as I let it run, there's chances to get items and stuff like that. So there is a pretty interesting AFK 
progression system. Like I said, it's like a fraction. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, running that for an hour, I can get the rewards that someone gets for running that for an hour in about two or three minutes. For real. So it's not like a, a crazy important thing. Like, you really don't even have to do it. Some people don't want to leave their computer running all night. You really don't have to. You don't. Uh, if you leave it running for eight hours, honestly, in 20 minutes, I can I could maybe get that. Uh, that math might be off. But something like that. 20, 30 minutes, I can make the, the rewards of what someone got for AFKing that in, in eight hours. Okay, so we went over that. Um, the airship quest and events. Uh, I'll do that. I'll show you guys that in a bit. But uh, fishing. We got fishing. Let's, let's take a look at fishing real quick. Let's see if we can go to a lake. There is fishing as well in this game. Um... This might not be the best location for it, but I'll, I'll show you guys what, what that's all about as well. It's a long video, guys. Long video. Props to you if you get if you get to the end with me. Props, alright? I also have class videos coming up as well. A lot of content I'm making for this game. Needed a drink. Lots of talking. Alright. Can I fish here? No, I can't, of course. Mm. Alright, we're gonna... Ah, I'm gonna show you something. You can click uh, click a warp stone on the map at a city and teleport to a city by spending some gold rather than running there. Uh, you might have, not might have noticed one thing though. I was auto running to a place, right? I did that on purpose. I'll show you something again real quick after this portal ends or, or load screen ends. I'm gonna show you what it's all about. Okay, so I'm at a city, right? So I want to go to that lake. It's obviously right out the gate, but I'm going to purposely right-click and auto-travel here. And it's going to take me there. It's going to take me right to where I want to go. And if you look at the map, you'll see lakes you can fish at are marked with fish. And I'm a genius and went to the one place I couldn't before. So now I'm at one that I can. So I'm going to go ahead and dismount and hit F. And I'm just going to fish. And this uses the fishing pole you have equipped. There's different quality. Um and all that stuff. You'll notice something here that says decrease auto fishing time by 3%. So there is something that lets you fish automatically in this game. You can throw your throw your rod out like that and just do nothing. So you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, we will automatically catch a fish if you don't enter the space bar for 3 minutes after you feel a nibble. So this will automatically catch the fish for me in 3 minutes. So you can let this run overnight as well and just automatically fish. If that's your thing. So if I hit space right now, it's going to start the fishing thing. Now I got to hold space again and then let go when it reaches that bar. Bam. And if you stop with that line in the middle, you'll see you'll catch a fish. It automatically recasts for you, which is pretty simple. And then you just chill. You just kick back and relax. Now, why fish? Well, fish can get you gold. You could sell it. You'll notice it's untradeable. But if I hit here, this dismantle button... Everything I can dismantle will light up. I can dismantle fish and get sliced fish. Filleted that baby. So now I got some fish, right? Um, that went into this material bag because that's where I had another one before. This is actually used for crafting as well. Um, you'll see it can be used to craft items at a crafting station. Place used, alchemy. So if you do take the time to actually look at the items, they're, they do tell you what, you what you can use them for. So you do... You do learn. There's a lot to learn in this game, a lot to know. But I hope this video helps you at least get a basic understanding of it. But uh, let's let's keep going. So we showed the uh, dimensional portal, random events, boss summons. Okay, so there. If I get lucky, someone might be summoning someone somewhere. There are boss summons out in the world. You'll see these icons here, right? See these icons. I have one for Plantarian. Plantarian. I can go there and summon that boss. There is a rare drop for an item to summon the world boss. There it is, Plantarian's Breath. You can get that by killing enemies in the area where the boss is. So if I go over there, I can summon him. Maybe I'll do that. We won't be able to kill him because I'll be alone. You know, I'd have to say something in chat, get the guild together, but I don't want to bother with that. But we'll go ahead and auto run over there. And there's... um. The boss you can summon, you can get rewards for it. How? What do you know what you get? What do you get for rewards from? Or wh wh what can I obtain from killing these, if I can speak correctly, right? If you click the boss name, you can actually see what you can obtain from these bosses by killing them. So really cool. Beyond that, you can do that for the zones as well. So as I zone into a zone, we'll take a look at Dragon uh, Dragon 
grind slope. If I click the areas, you'll see what enemies are in the area and the rewards you can get from it. So if I really want a purple weapon, I can go grind like crazy in that, that area and hopefully I get a drop for the purple weapon. So you can kind of like target grind in a way and be like, okay, I don't want, I don't want that. Let me check this area. Oh, I really need a good chess piece. Let me go that way. And another thing you can get is the crafting material that's obtainable through foraging is listed here as well. You can see everything you can get. And as I'm running through, I might see something. There it is. Look, a young oak. So there's some trees there I can get in the wild. So you don't have to just wait for the things to complete in your house, like the things you plant. You can go out in the wild. Like, I really need ore. I don't want to wait for that to complete. Uh, I'll plant some. I'll come back in two hours and get that. But I could also go out in the world and find some stuff. For instance, right here. Bam. Got some herb. I also got an achievement just there. Um, that is a good topic. I'll get to the achievements right now. Let's do it. Let's take a look at the achievements. So, real quick, if I hit escape, it's going to pull up the main menu. You can see a lot of stuff here. It kind of falls under character progression section of the, of the video, which we're going to get to. But I'm going to do it now. So, achievements. You'll see... Achievement bonus effects. These are the bonus effects that I currently have in place based off the achievements I've I've obtained, right? You'll see an N icon, which means something new here. If I click here, the life achievements, that was for the herb I just picked up. I can get a reward for it. Enhancement stones. Bam, receive reward. I just got that. So there are different rewards, like you can go do all the quests in a specific area and okay, complete world quests and then uh complete quests 150 times, and there's specific regions uh region quests and stuff like that unlock specific areas pvp achievements whole ton of ways to get achievements done and obtain rewards for it so i can grab that that's a treasure hunt uh thing which is also another thing let's use it let's use it we're gonna use this and we got a treasure room there's a lot of content in this game guys i'm not kidding more and more stuff keeps coming up. I keep getting lucky with what what appears in that one. I just didn't even realize I haven't claimed that achievement. This is a treasure room. So there's stuff like this as well. There's little mini games that are very, very rewarding. A lot to gain from it. So there's these bubbles here in this specific one. There's a whole ton of different versions for these bubbles. I need to watch out for and I need to loot these treasure chests while I try to avoid these bubbles. If you get caught in a bubble, you need to like... Click left and mouse right button really fast to get yourself out. I'll probably get caught right here, but I got that chest. My left and right mouse button, I get out. And I need to collect, uh, how many chests? 14 chests before the time wears out, or runs out. And then I'll be rewarded for it. So as I'm doing this, I'm getting gold and average jewels, which I'm pretty sure is vendor trash items, which is, so it's just more gold. I'm pretty sure it, it, yes. It's just vendor trash items, so this is a good way to get some, a nice bonus in gold. So if you ever find these, you do definitely want to want to do these little mini games. You can't just do them as much as you want. You have to get items for it. So you can't just sit in mini games all day. So if that's your thing, I'm sorry. You can't just turn this into a mini game MMO. So I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully complete this. Yeah, easy stuff. Last chest, bam. I think there we go. So there it is, I'll get that, and I get my final reward, experience, gold, receive reward, treasure chest, open this. Show me what I'm going to get, what's my random loot? Rune powder. Rune powder is used for upgrading everything. <laughs> so that's done, I can go ahead and exit now. Lots of content, right? Lots of stuff to do, lots of stuff. This is not even, did I even scratch the surface? Yeah, I scratched the surface. There's, there's still more stuff, but... There's a lot. Grinding is a big thing, too, if you're into uh, grinding in MMOs. It's quite important in this game. Um, I'll touch on that at the end of the video again as well. We're going to go summon a boss right after this load screen, because that's what we were doing before I got distracted with the treasure room. So I'm going to go ahead and mount. I'm going to run to Plantarian. Go, 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 go. People were summoning bosses throughout the entire closed beta. This is the last day of the beta. Uh, it, the population definitely went down because it's it's less than 24 hours left and a lot of people kind of dropped off. Uh, understandable for sure. 
But I think this is a game that can hold a population for quite some time. Lots of stuff to do. That's another mini game. I'm not going to do that because that can take some time. But okay, Plantarian. This guy, he will wreck me if I fight him alone. So I'm going to summon him and run. You know what? I'm not. I'm going to die on purpose. So I'm going to summon this boss. And you're going to see I used my breath and Plantarian is going to gonna be summoned i'm gonna die i'm gonna die on purpose because i want you guys to see something here so let's let's fight him let's solo this guy ready i can block his attacks see defense successful if i hit tab i got like a special ability here the boss does have like abilities you gotta dodge especially the ones in the dungeons they're quite difficult dungeon bosses can be a little crazy some of them some of them you'll probably be like difficult what is he talking about get to the level 41 I uh, actually think it's level 39. That one could be pretty crazy. So there's uh, the ground I gotta watch out for. So I'm obviously gonna die. I can't solo this guy, so I'll just let him kill me. Okay. So, why did I die? Because I want to show you something. Equipment durability loss. I lost experience. 190,000 experience. That could be... You could lose a lot of experience. That, that, that might be an hour of experience gain I just lost. And I did it on purpose because the beta is ending. So starting at level 30, 5% of your experience will be lost upon death. Some levels start taking a long time. When you first play this game, you'll level very quickly. They take a long time. So 5% experience, that's a hefty penalty, depending on what level you are. So I can instantly resurrect here and die again to Plantarian. Well, he's not aggressive anymore. He's not pulled. But I'm going to go ahead and select the resurrect point. I'm going to select the, the town that I ported to before. We'll go back there. So I died because I wanted to show you the durability and the experience loss. And one more thing. <sighs> this will likely be in the cash shop. Likely. Um, I think it's important to show you guys everything. So, experience recovery. If I come here and go to the experience recovery, you'll see I have four of these death experience recovery scrolls. I can restore the 490,000 experience I just lost by using one of those scrolls. And if you take a look at, at the bottom left, you'll see a yellow bar and the experience percentage. Um, I understand my... Nope, my camera's not blocking it. You see the 33% right there? When I click confirm, boom. I gain experience back. It went back up there. Experience was restored. I can imagine that being in the cash shop. So prepare for that type of stuff. Um, they did add this merchant here for this test called the Event Merchant, which has cash shop items that will likely be in the cash shop on a vendor so the player base can test it. That's Resurrection Scrolls, so you can resurrect on the spot. That is the Blessed blessed Laurel Wreath, which increases drop rate by 300% for 30 minutes. Remember the Luminous Battle AFK thing? That was the AFK thing for six hours. This is the 300% experience, drop rate, item acquisition, gold, you know, all that good stuff. That's here as well, so that will likely be in the cash shop. The mount I've been riding, that is from this vendor, so that's likely going to be in the cash shop. Mana Awakening, I'll get to that. Pet change skill, pet skill change thing, I'll pick one of those up right now. And I'll show you something real quick. If we go to the pets, you'll see... Um, Envy, that's my cat's name in real life, so I named her Envy. So here's a cat here. You could change own skills. Let's say you don't like the skills. Auto collects forageable items within a 10 meter distance and decrease equipment durability reduction by 5%. You could be like, okay, I don't want this one. Let me use my change scroll. And now it actually rolled a better skill. Increases equipment durability reduction by 10%. I'm sorry, decreases. Decreases is a good thing. So it actually got better. So. That could be in the cash shop as well. We don't know if these are all going to make it to the cash shop, but it's just what's like here right now, the event shop. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest one, is this one right here, the Star Blessing Package, which I'll buy this, and I understand my camera might be blocking a little bit of it, so we'll look at it over here. <sighs> Hunting experience increased 5%. Item drop rate, 5%. AP recovery speed increased by 3 Real quick, AP is right here that's action points everything like you gather uses action points it's like labor points from arc age right it's not as impeding as arc age's labor point system but action points are here so when you go out there to gather you can't gather all day because it takes action points 
Keep that in mind. Oh, action points, they regen at one every 10 minutes when you're logged out, three every 10 minutes if you're logged in by default. But if you have this thing here, it increases that. So inventory space expansion by 16 spaces, storage space expansion by 14, max action points increases by 50, luminous max energy, that's the AFK thing, eight hours total. Auto charge luminous energy daily and can participate in luminous battles immediately after charging. This is pretty much going to be an optional subscription, I imagine, because you notice how it says Star Blessing Package? One day. One day that lasts for it. So when it wears off, you got to use it again. So if I go ahead and use this, you'll see at the top right here, I'm going to get like a yellow buff. You'll see my action points. Watch my AP down here, 210. 260 now. I also have this Star Blessing Package buff at the top right, and I have all of those buffs. So be ready for an optional subscription. It will probably be there. Um... These are costume items, these are not, that's my costume right now, what I'm wearing. So, you know, it's just a costume that I really don't care about in cash shops. But you can change style slot, unequip this stuff, and I'll go back to looking like the, the pleb. <laughs> looking like my, my crappy gear. But yeah, I can, uh, I can put on the, uh, the costume stuff again if I want to. You could say, yeah, okay, yes, put it on. And I get all I get all fancy and stuff. Cool. So there's different mounts. There's also this lovely thing. If you're into the bikes instead of the actual mounts, you can roll around on a bike. So like I said, get ready for some cash up stuff. Decided to cut this video into two parts because they got very long. But if you haven't had enough Alliant content, check the channel because there is bound to be more there by now. Part 2 is probably uploaded and all five class videos with all the skills. If you want to see all the skills in the game and take a look at all that good stuff and uh, dive in more. And as always, if you like this content, please throw us a sub, throw us a like. And down below, you're going to see the guild website, the guild discord, the Oathbound Gaming website, Oathbound Gaming discord, the Twitch, all that good stuff. If you want to join us in game... Please uh, reach out to us, join our Discord, let us know. Hopefully I see you guys on the battlefield, I see you guys in the Lion, and in all those future MMOs that we'll be covering. So thank you very much for watching, I will catch you guys in the next video, and in part two. S